Uh, so, I was just thinking, does anyone else find it ironic that the Puritan is probably one of the most slutty outfits in this game? Hmm. Alright people, welcome back to Secret World, and this is... This is area, but this... This that I'm pointing at, that you can't see what my hand's pointing at? Yeah, this is the long-awaited, or possibly not long-awaited, Nightmare DPS deck building guide. And so, first I'm gonna start off with a confession. Um, I don't actually have most of the DPS things unlocked on this character. I've really slacked on the AP unlocks, and as upset as I am to say the way this, this game's going, uh, yeah, um, there's not many people to play with, let's put it that way. Which is, it, it's upsetting. I hope it picks up again. I hope they do something monumental um, with the content release that's coming, but I think it, it might be too little too late. Just a hunch. Anyway, uh, let's, let's forget about my views on where the game's going and where it's been, and let's focus on what we're supposed to be doing here. So, Nightmare DPS, okay? Obviously, the point is, you're supposed to spill out as much damage as you can. Yep. That's obvious, okay? But how are we going to do that? Alright? There's two very important things that I want everybody to consider before we actually get involved in this. The first is that, particularly with Nightmares, mobility is important. So melee DPS are at a disadvantage because they're limited to melee range in order to keep up their damage, okay? So the first is mobility. And the second, very simply, is that dead characters do zero DPS. If you don't stay alive, your damage is zero, you're useless. No offense. Well, actually, all offense. It's, it's a matter of relativity, okay? If you die on an encounter, your failure percentage is 100, okay? Just point blank, right? You're not contributing to the rest of that fight, so you failed. And you're not doing any damage. So, you need to be able to stay alive. So, that's a consideration. It's one that I'm not going to particularly take care of in this build, because we're going to assume that you've got a capable healer. Um, but I am going to cover... Actually, I'm going to mention it now turn the tables. That's not a bad one, and uh, we'll, we'll cover more of those later, anyway. So first up, what are we going to base it on? Well, we already know that, uh, wherever the hell I left it, clearing the path, huh? Hmm, yeah. So, that's a 100% penetrate if it hits an afflicted target, but it's in blades, it's melee. So, can we get something like that, but for ranged? Well, yes we can, and we're going to cover what has become kind of a cookie-cutter generic type of build amongst DPSs, and that is the Assault Rifle Elemental, which I've got a really bad Assault Rifle, check it out. That's probably a tanking belt. Yes, it is. I'm going to switch that, because it upsets me. Actually, that's... no, no. Okay, okay. So, the core of this build is pretty much two abilities. They're out of elemental to down here. And that is Blaze, which even with my crappy gear, that's a chunk of damage. But it also has a 100% chance to critically hit afflicted targets. So follow with me. I'm not going to be able to drag these on the bar. But uh, just, you know, follow through. Maybe write it down if you need to. So those two are the core of what we're doing. And to supplement this and to make sure that we're not relying on anybody else to apply Afflicted, Blood Sport, which every time you hit, it applies Afflicted. It's low damage, but it works off of any ability. An alternative is our old friend Shoot 'em Up, which does more damage, but requires a Frenzy ability, which we're not actually gonna be using as our builder. We are gonna have one in the build, namely suppressing fire right there but that's not generally what we're going to be using so for our builder we go down here in assault rifles we're going to be using safety off which yep that's decent move does some burst that gives us some opening 
for some additional elements. So let's round out our actives. Okay, safety off is our main builder, our main point sink is pretty much going to be blaze. Okay, to add to that, we're going to go assault rifle 2 1. 2 1 being my arbitrary numbering system. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. Free round burst. Okay, uh, this is another burster, which means we can tag some stuff to this. Uh, and that's that's a decent amount of damage. It's a nice point sink. Not quite huge damage though, is it? Nope. That's why Red Mist. It's got quite a long cooldown, so you'll be using free round burst between it. But look at that damage. Oh boy. Yeah. So, enough said, right? And we're gonna round this out with suppressing fire which is a little bit of AOE, it's kind of good, and high explosive grenade, which is also AOE and does a nice amount of damage. More to afflicted targets. Less to afflicted targets. Really? Really? Well, that's crappy. Hmm. Tell me why I didn't notice that before. Anywho, it, it's still probably your best option. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, so that's that's more or less the actives, okay? We've got one slot left, and what I'd suggest as something to possibly sink it into is Flicker, which is a nice mobility ability. Yep, mobility ability. You can you can get around quicker. It's good, and it looks cool. You know, I'm, as a healer, very jealous of the DPS jumping around with that. There are some other things that you might consider. One is Sleight of Hand, which if you get hindered and all of that stuff, it'll allow you to slip out of it. One very notable example is that really, really irritating boss at the end of Polaris when he does that whole, I'm gonna weigh away the entire room and sometimes it hits you even if you're not stood in the graphical effect and then if you're stood behind the rock out of line of sight where you have to stand even more out of line of sight, you get hit with this hinder and then I pop up and one shot you. Yeah, that's incredibly annoying. Slide of hand will save your life in that situation if you're not quick enough to roll out. Uh, something else you might consider is turn the tables, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, one thing I would say as well is down here, misdirection, and this is Touching on the group synergy that I may may, uh, may or may not be presenting to you next time, we're going to see about that. There's a slight chance that I'm going to switch this series out for Planet Side 2, which I hope people are not disappointed about. I hope people are excited about, because that is a really great game. I mean, it, it had only just come out of Alpha, and it was already more polished than some games are at release, okay? We're expecting big things from that and with certifications starting to be enabled it's going to be great but avoid that topic we're talking builds misdirection synergy okay this will essentially allow you to give a slight fret reduce for eight seconds so you generate less fret it's a great thing to throw out if you're planning on sinking a really chunky blaze red mist or let's say somebody pops uh where are we no, down here, Deadly Aim, Breaching Shot, all that stuff, right? Or, of course, wherever I left it, and I'm really terrible at finding this. Ah, uh, Short Fuse, yes. Uh, you can also include that in your build if nobody else has it, but keep in mind that its cooldown is equal to the debuff it applies, so you only need one person in your group with Short Fuse. Whereas, of course, Breaching Shot and Deadly Aim don't have this same debuff effect, so they can be popped every time they're off cooldown, uh, or rather not affecting everybody. If you have more than one person in the group that has them, you can just pop them one after the other for consistent damage. Uh, but misdirection, yes. The other thing it does is it's, it's a fret increase for your tank, so you could pop that right at the very beginning of an encounter, go absolutely nuts, and it will help the tank avoid aggro loss while also making sure that you can go totally nuts right off the bat. And that's a very interesting concept. Uh, naturally, do or die would be great if we didn't have red mist. Unfortunately, that's an elite, so they conflict. 
something to think about though. Uh, okay, anyway, our passives. We start off with Eidolon, which gives Blaze that 100% crit chance. Tasty. Oh yeah, Blaze also does more damage to afflicted targets. Bloodsport, Bloodsport. More on that in a moment. Uh, the other thing I'm going to throw into this is just over here, uh, which is Live Wire. Whenever you critically hit, blah, 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 once this counter reaches four, your next attack triggers an additional hit, right? That's going to be huge, considering you've got at least one ability that is guaranteed to crit, so you'll be racking that up at least as fast as you can throw out Blaze. Arguably faster if you use the right passives. Uh, another thing we're going to throw in is Fever Pitch over here in Chaos, which... Whenever you hit a weakened target, this is going back to group synergy. Any tank worth anything will be using Escalation, which applies the weakened effect. Okay? So, instantly, FIFA Pitch is going to be getting a bonus from that. You know, it's going to be racking up. And that is essentially reduces the chance of glancing by 50%. That's like plus hit. It covers a plus hit deficit. And that'll mean that, in theory, you should never miss. Which, missing is DPS loss, okay? If you glance, miss, whatever you want to call it, that's damage that hasn't been dealt and you've lost out. So, yeah. Um, next up, Fists. Ferocity. If at least two hits of a burst ability do not glance, you gain one stack of a blah blah blah. Essentially, this is a 9% at three stacks damage buff, okay? Now, both safety off and free round burst are burst attacks, as free round burst implies inherently. So those, both of them, provided you're not missing, are going to be adding plus damage. So that's, that's good. Um, next up is that blood sport I mentioned. That will allow you to apply your own afflicted effect so that things like uh, Blaze and Eidolon are benefiting and, you know, live wire over here. However, if somebody else in your group has that, you can switch it out, and I've got a, no a number of alternatives that are worthwhile. Um, at this point, you're really looking at buffage. So, I like Sudden Return, because it does a chunk of damage. That's based on penetrates. Uh, one that is arguably better is over in pistols, which is one in the chamber, which is when you critically hit, you also perform that. Uh, given that you've got some guaranteed crits, that's going to be a very big one. That's something that you'll absolutely want to have. Uh, Bloodsport and Sudden Return. Let's assume that, you know, you're not that taken by Sudden Return. Maybe, for some reason, you don't have a whole bunch of Penetrate, which, you know, if you've got 100% crit chances, why ain't you stacking Pen? And Pen's just good anyway. Um, <laughs> but Bloodsport especially, okay? So we don't need those. What can we go for? Well, over, not there, here, we've got, say, uh, extra bullet, which it gives safety off an extra hit. That's, based on my gear, an extra 135 damage for free. It's not bad. Um, certainly something to consider. Um, down in pistols, we've got something called mad skills, which, whenever you critically hit, you gain a single stack of the crit rating effect, which increases your critical rating by 30 per stack for 8 seconds, blah. Okay. 150 crit rating. Given that you've got a 100% crit off of Blaze, it's very worth considering using this in order to make sure that all your other abilities are critting at a higher amount and thus racking up the live wire counts much quicker and dishing out huge, huge amounts of damage because of this. That is a very potent setup. Uh, we've also got say Iron Maiden down here which is whenever you penetrate a target that is afflicted you gain minor penetration okay so you're gonna have an afflicted target frankly and sometimes you're gonna penetrate it uh, there is another one which if I can remember what it was um, 
might be around here somewhere. It's very similar to this, anyway. Well, let's see. Um, no, 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 no. In fact, penetration chance. Because this is how you search through abilities. And let's see. I know the icon. Oh, brawler. Brawler. Who can complain? Don't know why that's coming up with pen chance. In fact, it's not. Um... Okay, strange. Maybe that was actually critical chance. Nope. Okay, well, I don't remember. Um, it doesn't matter, though. I always encourage everybody to go and dig around the ability wheel themselves, because it's good. You know, I've thrown this build together in about, what, 10 minutes? Based on my own understanding of things, it's probably pretty solid, but I by no means claim that it cannot be improved upon. In fact, I'd quite happily say the opposite. I'd say, by all means, please, improve on this. Tell me about the improvements. I want the, ah, of course, moment that comes when somebody just presents you something that had never occurred to you. Um, okay, so that's quite a serviceable nightmare build. It will serve you well in a perk. Um, and any inexperienced group. Let's let's touch on group synergy. Let's say you've got a good group, okay? You run together a lot, and you know, you know somebody else is going to be applying the afflicted and doing all that stuff, and you're not particularly worried about all the rest. You want to actually buff your group, okay? What do we do about this? Well, we start out with. This is a new build, by the way, if you're following along, so turn over your paper. I've got nothing written on the other side of mine, so I'm just going to throw it behind my monitor for a moment because I don't care to look at it. We're going to start out with the business in Pistols 1-1. Now, okay, this is also the same with Safety Off and Free Round Burst, okay? Builds one resource for each equipped weapon, a single target attack that, deals, uh, that hits three times, dealing... Uh -huh. That is, it used to be 135. Go back up to 135. We're just going to call it 135. We're going we're gonna to round up to the nearest five, right? That is every hit. So it hits three times. Three times 135. Uh, let's see, 273, 405, 405 damage, okay? That's what it's dealing every time you hit that. Instant. Who can complain about that, right? That's, that's a nice chunk of damage. And this is based on my gear. Better gear will get you higher numbers, always. Um, so that's a great little builder there. And for a point sink, shootout. Shootout is amazing. Like, it does so much damage, it's, it's retarded. And uh, what are we going to pair these pistols up with? Because have you ever seen pistols in a nightmare group? Well, you should have. We're going to throw in overkill, which is down. No, out for a kill out for a kill. I always call it overkill. You'll remember this from the subway station at the very beginning of the game. Consumes all shotgun resources. That's a huge chunk of damage again. Like so much damage. And for a bit of AoE utility, let's get kill a flow. In fact, I could drag all of these abilities onto the bar right now, but there's something later that I can't and most of the passives, so don't don't worry yourselves. Um in fact, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Shoot out, kill a flow, out for a kill, yeah. Next up, right? That's all you need to do really sick damage and couple it up with some passives, which I'm I'm gonna go into right now. So you remember Fever Pitch, good friend Fever Pitch. Almost every nightmare build should have that because it really saves you on having to stack hit and the fact that you know the target's gonna be weakened unless your tank's a moron. So you know, capitalize on it. Add to that lethality, which whenever you hit, oh, you're not going to be missing, huh? That's a damage buff. Uh, in fact, you could include this in the other nightmare build. This is another good one because it will stack uh, with effects such as twist the knife and where did we have it? Like ferocity, yeah, ferocity and twist the knife. Wherever that's gone, there. They're very similar, but I'm pretty sure that those effects do not stack. So, 
I guess you could use them together if you want. I mean, if I'm wrong, please tell me. I don't think I am. Um, provisional, I'll just say, you know, they're not going to work. But we're going to use Twister Knife in this build anyway. So there's your next one after Lethality. Uh, next up is Sudden Return. You can kind of kind of guess what kind of stat you're going to be stacking here. There's a lot of Penetrate coming out of this, right? Next up, we're going to be using Iron Maiden. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Looks like more penetration, more penetration. Uh, pistols. One in the chamber. Yep. There's a lot of commonality going on here, isn't there? Well, yep. And then finally, we're going to use Livewire again. Thing is, these are just a very nice mix of uh, passives. And this build, I wish I could take credit for it. It's a very smart guy called Gage, uh, who hangs around down here a lot. And, uh, yeah, we took the build to pieces and realized we cannot capitalize this, at least not with what it does. You can get higher damage builds, but here's the really critical part. When you got your passives in place, which, yep, yep, they're all good. Yeah, if you can't see them, they won't hurt you. Um, <laughs> right, how do we f f finish off these actives then? One, deadly aim, right? Two, breaching shot. You've just brought two damage buffs to the table. And now, the piste de resistance. Clean up, which I can't get, but that uh, is pretty much a necessity for somebody in your group to have, right? That is huge. Cleanup is so overpowered, right? Gives all group members a uh, beneficial effect that lasts 9 seconds. While this effect is active, it cleanses one detrimental effect every 1.5 seconds, right? So, that's six things cleansed off them in the space of that 9 seconds. That's ridiculous. Uh, and moreover, their targets will be purged of one be uh, beneficial effect with each hit. Wow! So you've got an overpowered cleanse and an overpowered purge all on one ability and you're not using an elite anywhere else in this build. You can throw that on, you'll still be doing sick damage with these four abilities and you've got buffs and you've got that. You cannot beat it. That is incredible. And that is why, you know, have one or even two people using this build in a group. Hell, why not? Have three. Go nuts. Well, no, okay. Honestly, I say you want short fuse so you probably want at least one AR elemental in there um, to cover that but wow honestly that's a build and a half I would show you DPS figures I've got the damage meter up but alas you know I don't have any of the passives well I have some of the passives but not most of them um, either way you know this is nightmare DPS on a reasonable level You've got two builds there, which will work nicely. You can use them as a basis to try and figure out even more powerful builds. You can just go nuts with your own builds using the thinking that, that has been established, you know? You need to dish out large amounts of damage. You need to be mobile. You need to stay alive to deal the damage. And, of course, always, always just go with the sickness with stacking up the passives and synergy, synergy, synergy. Always synergy. And if your group's cool, throw on some damage buffs because at the end of the day, it's not about beating the other people in your group. It's about the entire group being successful, all right? Being the top DPS is, is great, but if you can narrow the gap so that everybody is doing amazing DPS, that's better. I'd rather be second or even third place provided the entire group is good rather than pulling first and having a margin of like 25% of the damage. I've... I've had worse. I've had worse. I can tell you an interesting story about Molten Core back at level 16 WoW where I was leading the DPS by a full 2% in a 40-man raid, and they were not slacking. And they were in epics, and at the time, I was wearing greens and blues by choice, and they couldn't figure out how I was doing it. All I can say is, the wonders of plus shadow damage. Um, anywho, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to shut up and leave you all alone to work on these builds. I'll say thank you very much for watching. Um, if this is the last time we're together in the secret world, then I'm very sad to see it go. Um, 
I'm very sad to see what's happening to it. It's a game that had everything going for it, except for management. And if anybody from phone comes watching, I'm sorry, but that's just really how I feel. Um, so, you know, if this was useful, if this was interesting, if I was even slightly entertaining, we need to shoot that guy at least once, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, you're going to get off there. I'm going to switch those around because I'm, I'm really... Uh, really picky like that and we're gonna get the pistol on the build we're gonna get the shotgun not on the build but on the bar yes yes I know my stuff let's sprint okay bucko I got no passives but eat some pistols now eat some shotgun watch me rapidly strafe and pop some cooldowns here's the business here's some shootout and I mean without any passives and I'm still capable of dishing out Oh yeah, and no particular aim here. I'm just hit, hitting random buttons and yeah. If you add passives to this and you have reasonable gear, we're talking basic nightmare stuff, you can easily hit the 2.2k mark on these things, which that's not a small amount. Um, I was saying goodbye, yes. If this was interesting, vaguely useful, or you enjoyed me shooting that thing, please hit some buttons. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll just say it. The like, favor, and subscribe. I'm never going to say that again. Take it easy, people.